Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and I am here today to talk to you about the most excellent 3DR ready to fly X8 Plus Multicopter. This is what I would consider pretty much state of the art as far as unmanned aerial drones go and I have had the chance to play with this unit for about six months and wanted to talk to you a little bit about it. Why am I talking to you? Well, I'm talking to you because you guys that follow my channel are interested in Arduinos, are interested in, in Raspberry Pis and BeagleBone Blacks, makers, people that build things. And so you're probably interested in this thing that's coming along called unmanned aerial drones. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about this particular model that I decided to buy. The first thing that you need to know about it, you know, if you go to my website, toptechboy.com, I've got the link right under this video. You can go to this lesson, and I give you some uh, sources where you, can, uh, where you can get this and other data on it. But as far as what I'm going to talk to you today about is, is that you're interested in getting into unmanned aerial drones, and where is a good starting place? When I was looking at it, uh, what I really kind of was torn between was this uh, 3DR and the uh, Phantom. There's the uh, Phantom 1, the Phantom 2, and the Phantom 3 unmanned aerial drones. And I've had a chance to use both of them, but for my applications, and what I'm going to recommend to you is I am really going to recommend this 3DR unit, this 3DR X8 Plus unit. Now, this is kind of the bottom line. I'm going to talk to you about the pros and cons of both the uh, 3DR X8 Plus and the Phantom. Okay, If you want a toy <clears throat> that you want to get out of the box and fly that day, you know, get it out of the box, plug it in, read a little getting started guy and be out doing flying, uh, you know, flying missions, sending video back, having lots of fun, the Phantom is easier to use. The Phantom truly is, truly is ready to fly. You get it out of the box, it will fly itself. It's very easy to get up and running. And so if you're completely unsure and you want something more like a, you know, a big boy toy, probably the Phantom is better. Okay, but if you are like me and you're a maker and a hacker and a programmer and a put things together, I have this idea kind of thing, you're really going to like the 3DR better, okay? Because I teach high school and because I teach these lessons, I viewed the 3DR as something much more of a learning platform, a platform on which I can teach engineering and a platform on which students can learn engineering. And you might be a teacher or you might just be a parent, but let me tell you, if you get one of these things, your kids are going to go absolutely crazy. I usually get into the classroom about 6.30 in the morning because I want to get my, my day going early. There are kids waiting for me to get here so they can come in and work on the, work on the drone. And so you're creating a learning platform with this 3DR that kids will just 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 go crazy to come in and learn. So as far as education goes, the 3DR is an exceptional education tool. The Phantom, I think, is fun, but there's not that same chance to hack into it. It's sort of like you take it out of the box, you fly it around, it does its thing, but you don't have those same that same ability to really uh, to really learn on it. And so after playing with both of them, I really consider the 3DR X8 Plus a better learning platform if you're interested in really kind of applying engineering skills and, and having an exciting uh, an exciting platform to work on. That is the advantage of the X8 Plus. The disadvantage is, is that there's more of a learning curve. If you look at this, this isn't in a sleek plastic case. You have to kind of put this together, okay? So let's talk about putting it together. <clears throat> On mine, I had a high school freshman put this together. I did not help him. He got the instructions. He got the getting started thing. He went to the website wiki and he got the whole thing put together based on the instructions. I will say that it's a freshman in high school, but he is a relatively talented freshman. So it's not just like a little, you know, a little lame kid. I mean, it was a pretty smart kid that put it together. There are a lot of steps in the assembly, but the instructions are clear. And if you follow them carefully, you can put it together and it will work. And so what I found, though, is, is that in going through all of the instructions, there were a couple of mistakes that he made along the way. 
And so I did have to go in and do some debugging and find, you know, exactly how to get the uh, to how to get the thing uh, get the thing going. We did get the one; it's not mounted right now, but we did get the gimbal and the GoPro camera, and so we are able to get the live video feed from this. We've got the live video video feed back to a laptop on the ground, and then we've actually been able to hook that laptop up to YouTube, and we can stream live to YouTube real-time images of our flight and so that's a pretty a pretty neat thing to do the way these things work and what we mean by unmanned aerial drone how this is different than what you think of a remote controlled toy is is that in this drone we can go to a software package that comes with uh, that comes with the uh, with the unit, and you have sort of like a Google Earth view, and you can program into that your flight path. You can then upload that flight path into this drone, and then it flies autonomously. Now you got to make sure you understand the laws, and you got to make sure that you use good engineering judgment, and you exercise good judgment related to safety, and you exercise good judgment related to the legal aspects of it but this thing is capable of flying on its own you upload the mission and it flies that mission it will actually take off itself and it will land itself and so the mission that you put into your flight planner is uploaded and this thing takes off and does its thing what I found is is that it actually works very well there's also kind of like there's the full autonomous mode and then there's sort of a flight assist mode where you can kind of fly it like maybe it's flying a mission and you can come in and, and kind of adjust things but it is still flying itself and it's taking directions from you as far as where you want to go and what I mean is is that the flight computer is still maintaining balance and maintaining level and maintaining position and you're just sort of saying go this way a little bit go that way a little bit it's not like you're having to fly like if you think of the old radio control helicopters where you know it flips over and crashes flips over and crashes it's not like this this thing flies itself and if you're using the radio you're just inputting little hints where you want to go and it still flies itself there's also full manual mode if you are a guy that knows how to fly these things you can go and you can fly it in full manual and so I really like those things uh, those things about it <clears throat> What I will say is, okay, so the freshman put it together, and he made a few mistakes, so I did have to help him. So if you had some that, one that was a little more adept, like maybe a sophomore, junior level, who had maybe had some a little bit more engineering experience they could they could do it completely on their own I would say for the most part though that if you have high school students they could do most of it but there is going to be a need of a little bit of adult supervision to get the thing uh, to get the thing going it's not like putting together a little uh, a little toy I mean it's, it's some it's some real things that have to be done here uh, but like I say there are instructions if you follow the instructions carefully step by step there are lots of steps, but the steps are clearly written. <clears throat> if you go through those steps methodically, <clears throat> you will get this put together and you will get it working. Okay. Now, what I did find is along the way, there were a couple of points that we hit snags that I just could not figure out what was going on. There was something that wasn't working right and I as an adult could not figure it out. The excellent thing is, is that the 3DR guys provide very good technical support. They have technical support by email. <clears throat> I found that they would respond pretty much always within 24 hours. So if I really got stuck, they would e I would email them, they would email me, I would do what they said, and I could get it going. Sometimes you would have to go back and forth several times. But what I would say is, is that if you get this thing, and if you follow the instructions carefully, you will be able to get it working, be able to get it up and flying, and be able to get it out doing really, really neat things, okay? Uh, so I found the technical support from 3DR to be exceptional, and therefore, when you look at the price of this thing, the price of this thing is it's pricey. It's a couple of thousand dollars, and you could probably find something with similar specs for a lower price. But the thing is, is that you're not with those lower prices getting that technical support, and so I'm willing to pay more is insurance to know that if I get stuck on this thing <clears throat> there's an expert that I can email and he will work with me to get the thing working so I've been very pleased with getting this uh, 
getting this going. I would say that probably between the mistakes that the students made and me helping to debug, plus a couple of snags that we hit, it took us about a month to get this thing going. You could probably do it quicker than that. Maybe things are a little better now. Maybe you could do it in a, you know, in a week or so or a few days. But I'm just saying for me, it took me about a month until I had this thing out doing everything I wanted, including the, the live video feed from the GoPro camera, positioning the gimbal, gimbal working right, the wireless video transmission working right, GPS working right, automated flight, everything working right. <clears throat> it took me about a month to get the whole thing uh, just the way I like it. But now, what do I like about this thing? Look at this. This thing can carry a really pretty significant payload, plus it's got pretty close to a 20-minute uh, flight time that you can get out of this. So there's all types of things that I can do now that, yes, the basic flight platform is working, but as a teacher and as students, we can now start working on instrumentation packages to put on this. One of the things that we're looking at is we just got a FLIR chip, a forward-looking infrared radar from uh, from SparkFun, and that is true night vision. That's through true thermal imaging, <clears throat> and we are building a system where we're hooking that to the Raspberry Pi, and then over a long-range Wi-Fi radio, we are beaming live uh, thermal in imaging video from this uh, from this uh, 3DR drone back to the ground where we can view it in real time and that's that's pretty cool. We're also getting it set up where it goes in and it feeds into uh, virtual reality glasses and so with your virtual reality glasses you are able to then see in real time what is going on from kind of like what they call first person view you're able to see what's going on from the perspective of the uh, the camera position on the drone and so that's really neat and that's something that we're uh, we're continuing to work with and that's a great learning platform I mean that's a great learning experience for a student to put together a project like that I hope to put up videos on some of these projects that we're doing <clears throat> we're doing with this thing uh, doing with this thing shortly. The other sort of interesting thing would be if you think about a non-axis inertial measurement system, instrument your head with a non-axis where you're tracking your head position left, right, up, down, tilting, and then feed that data back to the camera you know, have a couple of servos on your camera where the camera is pointing in response to your head. So not only are you first person view from the drone, but as you turn your head, the camera tracks how your head was turning and it's really like you were sitting there in, uh, you know, uh, riding, uh, riding on this drone. <clears throat> That's a project that I haven't done yet on this, but I have all the components and I've done similar things before, so that's one of the things that we will do with this. Also imagine with your Arduino building instrumentation packages, measure pressure, measure temperature, measure, you know, get some of those combustible gas sensors and have like a, a toxic gas monitor. You could instrument this thing where you could actually like work with the sheriff's department and fly over an accident scene looking for, you know, possibly radioactive leaks or things like that. So again, the thing about this is it's just an exceptional learning platform because it is so stinking fun that students are just going to be fighting against each other to be building projects for this thing. And so as far as an educational tool goes, I think it is <clears throat> an exceptional educational tool. So I'm going to give this thing five stars because I really, really like it. I think it's a great value. I think there is exceptional customer support from 3DR. I think it's hackable. You can go in and you can make it your own. You can make it do things that the one out of the box doesn't. And it's something that you can figure out. It's not like you're out there on your own. There's other people doing this and you can get the support you need to get it to do what you want it to do. If uh, Let's see if I was going to complain about something. It would just be that, yes, it, you gotta. it's tedious. You've got to follow the instructions to get the thing uh, up and running. Uh, we've probably flown it 20, 30 times with great uh, with great luck. So I will eventually be putting together some, some video series on this thing, but if you're a teacher or you're a parent, you want to continue to encourage your kids in engineering, this is the platform to get, and it is a lot of fun. Got links down below. Go to toptechpoy.com, and like I say, when I get some more time, I will be doing lessons on the projects that we're building on this. toptechpoy.com. We will talk to you guys later.